You gotta go hunting. You gotta go hunting for them. Here, fish, fish, fish. And on a lake like this, you gotta hit it all. Boom, hit that, hit this stump, hit this rock, hit whatever. Knock, knock. <sighs> Pete, if you can call things like that, I'll follow you everywhere, buddy. Pete, we own this. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> Call that in. You might have just set a record. Pete, have you ever seen one that big? No, I haven't. I love it. I never know what you're going to see out here in the wild. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin Pan Optics, all seeing sonar. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Yes, we're in the sun, the fish in Canada. So today is pretty special for me in that, as you can see beside me, it's not Angelo this time. It's uh, not that Angelo's not special, by the way, Angelo. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Get out of here. But I got my, bud, my good buddy Keith Beasley from Canada in the Rough here. And Keith and I have, uh, the only time we've ever fished together, we shot on the Fish in Canada show years ago in Saskatchewan on Esteban Lake, and we had an absolute blast. How's that for a trip to Saskatchewan? <laughs> <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. Yeah! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Ah! I got him back here now on Potash Lake uh, in the Bancroft area, Ontario. And I know. Keith, you know this area very well for the hunting aspect of it. Yeah. I'm glad to have you back, but this is going to be fun. I appreciate it. Hey, man. We had a ton of fun in Saskatchewan, and I, we love the fish. fish. That's the van, Saskatchewan, and we're catching giant buckets. Look at that thing. Look at that. So it's, it's always great to be out, and, uh, and I like to hunt bass, too. That's the key, because this guy, as much as he loves hunting, Small game, big game, wherever he loves hunting these guys, especially the green ones too. They have the large mouth and small mouth. He's a fisherman, he's a, like he's a, a nutcase like the rest of us are. When, when you're an outdoors person, you just love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm just really looking forward to this, buddy. We're gonna try and smash a couple of Do big it. green ones and some brown ones. Do it. Perfect, love it. Keith's already grabbing his rod. <laughs> Don't tell Pete. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is Keith Beasley right here. You think he's not avid? Let's There's try this. So much good stuff. Let's out try here. this, bud, right here. All right, I'm in. I'm in. Little guy. Yeah, he's, he's all right. Nice what? job catching him. Yeah, he 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 hit it and let it, it go. Well deserved. Hit it again. <laughs> he's okay. But he it worked not. for him though. Pulled him right out of that dark, dirty. I cast. So far in there, it was underneath those cedars, skipped it in there, and it took for, you know, and then he bit once, let it go, and came back. And they're all out for that little guy. <laughs> like, oh, is he pooping out something? Look at this fishing line, Keith. No way it is, too. So that fish has been caught and either broke off or released. I'll show that to the camera. There's the hook right there. Hang on, no, I'll pull it out if I can. The hook's right there. Yeah. He's trying to get the hook out. This is so cool. And a lot of times they can get, they can poop that hook out, believe it or not. <laughs> That's amazing on nature, right? He's ate somebody's bait and uh, the line broke or whatever when he broke it off here or they released it, cut it off, and he's trying to poop that hook out. Either that fish, the, maybe the hook will dissolve with rust and go away, or maybe he can expel it himself, but it's better off, he's staying alive obviously right now with it in there, so I'll just let him go like that and then normally they can just live their life like that and he'll poop around it if that's, you know, it sounds gross, but that's what they do, so. Believe it or not, this isn't the first time we've had a what the heck is that experience. <laughs> Check out this clip from a previously unaired episode where Ange and I were fishing yeah. in Halliburton County, not too far from where Keith and I are today. That's a little better. That's getting better. Oh, he's got Ange? that same, uh... That's the fish. I think that's the fish I caught yesterday. Is it really? No kidding. I really do think so. I took a walk around here yesterday caught a fish that had a hook. It was right there? I'm sure, yeah, it's gotta be. Because it's festering the same way. Had no a little kidding. jig hit. Matter of fact, I got a picture of that. I took a close up of it. What a good looking fish. Well, he was hungry, he ate a Senko yesterday. And a big chunk today. <laughs> 
Pete, you just said that first tree up there will get the fish of the day. And if Pete, if you can call things like that, I'll follow you everywhere, buddy. <laughs> that was awesome. Down what 12 14 feet there? Yeah, nicely done, buddy. Yeah, way to start it out. <laughs> We're coming back to Rose, Saskatchewan days, but in deep weeds. Uh, that was perfect, though. Yeah, I thought it was bigger than that. You actually, come in out of the deep water and what'd that bite at 12 13 feet? Yeah, for sure. We just kept where Keith was watching uh, up front. I watched the break. I said, Oh my god, look at the weeds here. He said, Look at the weeds here. We saw it instantly both ways through the garments and through Keith's eyes. And then uh, we thought we got to try it because it just looks perfect. It comes a real fast break to a point of different weeds, right? Yeah, yeah and, it was uh, different transition. It's not a big that. fish, but it's a good start, right? So now we know there's probably something there. Feeler tap or just nope. just wait. Felt wait. And I thought maybe weeds, but I set the hook anyway. Okay, well we, we know the large boulder here. <laughs> now we just got to get onto them. See you, little fella. Cute little fish. Love deep fish. Whoa. And that was on a, uh, a flapping hog, a crawbait, bud, so. Nice. Yeah, very subtle. Not hardly any bait at all. I thought well, the neat part of that is a lot of guys think you only catch those on pads and docks. When you can get about 12 foot breaks and weed edges, that's oh, pretty fun. I love that. Because if they're stacked in here, yeah. you're going to have a heyday, right? This is where you'll get a school of fish in a spot like this. Just got to figure them out as to where. Leave that guy out in case I have to go in again. You got him. He was on it. Get a buddy with him. I'll throw that out quick and then I'll get the net. I get the net up front here, anyways. Good one? Yeah, solid for sure. Tree fish. Right off the front of that tree. Tree fish, buddy. Let's get him in the net. The water's too cold. There's a, there's a friend with them. You catch Is a friend. There? I'll let him myself. I figured there might be. Yeah. Well, right that might be a big right fish. Right behind him. Good fish. He's a nice one, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Don't let him jump. Oh, don't jump. Oh, I just about had that guy. He was there, man. I felt like I had Try him. Try to get him. I felt like I had him. You get that guy in the net, I got to throw this little guy. You got him? Yep. Let's see that guy. Look at that, Pete. I haven't even seen him yet, bud. P3? Yeah, he's, he's fat oh, anyway. Beautiful fish, Pete, bud. Pete, you just said that first tree up there will get the fish of the day. And if Pete, if you can call things like that, I'll follow you everywhere, okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. <laughs> that was awesome. Nice. Good job, bud. Beauty, beauty, beauty. You got a rocky pulling me. Look at Pete That's catches pretty. the rock bass, and I'll take these. <laughs> That's like Saskatchewan, bud. I got the pike, you got the bass. <laughs> Good work, Keithy. Our water's 60, just got up to 67 degrees. Said to Keith, you take the outside of the tree, I'll take the inside. We're just trying to establish a pattern. I mean, we're we're going back to our Saskatchewan days where we had to figure things out. Here, fish, 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 fish. Sometimes it takes you a few hours or you whatever. Go hunting. You gotta go hunting. Look see, at that right see, there. See that one there? That might be drop, something to look at. Drop. With this, hopefully, if it's a fallen tree and we'll hit a bunch of fallen trees, you know, there are. In northern waters like this, there's usually a bunch of them. And we can uh, try and make a pattern out of it. And that, what a pattern basically is, is that every time we see a fallen tree, it, if there's, you know, every five trees, there's a largemouth on it, you know that you're gonna have a good chance at, you know, catching a, a largemouth bass off a tree, so. And it's a classic northern largemouth pattern, right? I mean, trees are good. Wood is amazing. This lake is amazing for wood, apparently. So, good job, bud. It's fun. Now we're gonna pop a four, then we pop a five, and then we go back to the cottage to have lunch. <laughs> like the way you think, Pete. Knock, knock. I love He's it. home and Keith missed. What the heck? Call that in. You might have just set a record. Pete, have you ever seen one that big? No. You never know what you're going to see out here in the wild. You're going to be peeling the shirt off pretty soon, the jacket off pretty soon, bud. Don't worry, I won't peel my shirt off for you. So it was one degree this morning, and now it's already about 20, close to it. It's actually perfect. So the tree trunk and other branches go right into shore. See your stick yeah. So that's your line. I'll leave that whole end for you. 
Another rocky down there, a sunfish. There's some nice bait down there. There's one. A spinning rod? Yeah, he's not that big. It looks okay. Go, no, a little bit. Half large, yeah. no. Nice one. Took her quick. Take a little. Down and get him out. Pete, he what? is not big, but check this what out. What is this? I, I, it's feathers. Look at this. He's got bird feathers coming out of him. Look at this. He ate a bird? He's been eating a bird. Look at that. Full feathers. Look how long those are. Oh my god. Coming out with craw mixed on it. Look at that. That those is are crazy. Bird feathers. <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> we're throwing the wrong You're bigger bait. than you think. We were throwing baby bird baits. <laughs> Chambers. They're eating well anyway. <laughs> Good for you, That's buddy. Outstanding. I have never seen that. Like that long? That's crazy. I mean, Ant had that one years ago that ate the baby duck. Ate never duck. spit it up. It's full duck. Yeah, small mo. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh he, he spit just spit on a great big. Look at that. A, f what a is, bird. A, a duck. bird. Yes, guys. You want to see That's a something? Bird. Give me that. Wow. It's a baby duck. That just came out of that. Wow. As we netted it. <laughs> There's a first on the, probably on any fishing show right there, buddy. <laughs> maybe a baby bird fell out of a nest out of a tree, maybe? Yeah. Wow. That is cool. I love it. I never know what you're going to see out here in the yeah, wild. It's, buddy, that's what nature's all about right there, as you know. I can duck hunt and fish at the same time with Pete Bowman. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed. I got him. No, it's not much, though. Yeah, but is there a school of smallies there? Oh, is a question. It's a large, I think. Believe it or no. What is it? Walleye? Sucker. Sucker. Shot Oh, my God. Off. Pete. A crankbait. That's in a chub. It's one of them chubs, middle of but... the lake. What the heck? <laughs> Call that in. You might have just set a record. Man, have you crazy. ever seen one that big? No, I haven't. That's like a world record minnow right there. He's gurgling that. He says, put me you back. I want to become Look at this one. thing. Like that, the reason these are great bait fish is they're so soft. Like you just feel the softness right. of this thing, right? And the reason it's not a sucker is that mouse all up front, not yeah, down below. Yeah, and below. So it's some kind of a chub. I don't know what, lake chub, whatever. <laughs> That's a cool looking fish. That's unbelievable. Oh, I don't, I've bait, never eh? seen that. The scales are really soft on it. That's like, if there was musky or pike in this lake, or an eight pound largemouth, an eight pound largemouth would eat that. Crush that. that. He'd eat that. That's amazing. Okay, little guy. That's great. That's funny, eh? Biggest minnow I've ever caught. There's one. Big? Nice one. Let's get the net on him. <laughs> oh, go this side, perfect. Yeah, sorry. No, watch the, oh, that motor's running, that motor's running. I think I'm in it. Oh, buddy, you're going to lose that fish if you... Oh, you're in it. Aren't you? Largy in oh, the no. rocks. Get him in there. Where's my net? Where's your fish? A little largy. He's not right, though. Boy, I thought you were going to lose your rig on that. That was close, wasn't it? <laughs> Largy's in the rocks, though, eh? Like... Hey, that's awesome. You see now? That's something you wouldn't expect. No, because this is no weeds. You know, hot, sunny day. You think it'd be smallies and a little bit of both, but... Not a bad one. So, okay, this is a perfect example. Now, you being a, a hunter, a big game hunter, what do you look for when you go out, you know, you're looking for yeah, a, that's a, an That's a funny question, because growing up, we've always connected hunting to fishing and feel they're very similar. Right. Different methods, but same stuff. We're looking for stuff that the animal can relate to and edges. Right. So whatever transitions from field to swamp or woods to field, Somewhere in that 50 yards of that edge, you're gonna find your animals, in our opinion. So, so like this, this stuff. Rock to mud, rock to yeah. weeds. Deep lake weed over there in the rock, where those transitions are. I find it almost, this is this is hunting fish to me. Yeah, so we hunted down a largemouth and a smallmouth spot, which is a bonus, I like that. That's, Take it, that's like great. finding moose and elk together. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you, <laughs> what hangs around with elk? Absolutely, or, yeah. And, yeah, and oftentimes when something works for one thing, you're seeing everything there, it's just a good spot yeah. where animals are. And There you go. We can hunt and we can fish. Shoot again. Okay, I'll take a large mouth out of this spot. That'd be fun. Oh, he's a beauty, Pete. Oh, good one. Look at that. There you go, buddy. Nice. To get to today's Central Ontario bass fishing, Keith and I first took Highway 401 to Highway 115 North. We then took Highway 7 East and then 28 North. We finally took McGilvery Road to our accommodations at Anchorage Resort. This place oozes bass fishing with both large and smallmouth around every corner. If ice fishing is your thing, the resort will set you up with transportation to and from their heated huts for a shot at a great population of lake trout and splake. 
The resort's cabins are located directly on the water and offer a fantastic view of the lake. There's great docking facilities along with a well-maintained boat launch. Lodge owner Brian Stubbings still rates Potash Lake as one of the best bass lakes in all of Ontario. Oh, there Another largey off That's the bare rock. Right. Seriously. What the heck, eh? I love it, buddy. Nicely done. Now, can I bring him in like this or not? That's the question. I can net him for you. Got him. Nice, nice fish. Pound. Yeah, you know. They're still here. I'm not leaving until they're done. <laughs> we got to stay on it. Never like you leave said. any left. Like you said, the edges, right? We're, we're working at edge. There's a rock. There's a rock edge. It goes rock to uh, whatever bottom is here. So that's just the transition. Is exactly and what's your opinion? Here. We're off the main lake, and it's constantly blowing into this point. So, so there's got to be wind. Is wind and People always want calm weather. Oh, I right. need to calm to fish. It's not so good, folks. The wind is really good for fishing, right? It blows the bait around. It blows the zooplankton around. breaks the sunlight a little bit. Yeah. There's all kinds of keys to the wind that really help fishing. Little one off the end? Yeah, exactly. Largey? Yeah, largey. Now we keep this talking about transitions or whatever. There's some rock. There's some weed out here and there's some wood right there. It's a three-part transition. Now, I mean, that's a can't-go-wrong type of spot for largemouth, right? But, little guy, he's the right species. Whew, he's been eating fish, crayfish or something because he stinks. He stinks like crustacean. Yeah, there they go. And on a lake like this, in potash, you got to hit it all. It's crazy. I mean, you, Find your little sections, boom, hit that, hit this stump, hit this rock, hit whatever. I don't know what size, but... I mean, it doesn't feel huge yet, but coming up now. Might be what taught me there, though. Yeah, it might be. It's a little large. A little large, you in the rock. What are you doing here? Just kind of popped out where oh. the hole. Oh, that's a bad job. That's all right. Okay. What is he doing out here? That might be what popped you. Feeding on cross. Yeah, I guess so, eh? Keith had a little bump, so anytime you have a bump like that, one guy should go back with a Senko or a jig or like a small jig or some kind of a finesse bait, drop shot, anything like that. Out of that clump. Yep, chase me out. Son of a gun. Mmm. Throw that jerk bait by him though if you don't mind. No, oh, let's stay on. will come back leg. out, but you never know, I guess. Is that him? That's him, maybe. Yeah, you got that's the him. shoulders? Uh, I don't think that's it's him. It's a largey. Believe it or not, I don't think that's no, him. No, I don't think it is either. It's a large mole. Yes, it is. It is a bucket. <laughs> Mine was a smallie. Right on. I'm not him anyway for you. I'm ready. Nice yeah, job. He's a good fish. He's a good fish. Maybe it was him. Oh, he's a beauty piece. He's a good one. Oh, look at that. There you go, nice. buddy. Nice. There you go. Okay. We worked that clump for what, five casts? <laughs> At least five, yeah. We both threw, I threw a finesse stub, Keith threw his big jig in there, and then uh, I just threw back with that little half sankle rig, little Ned rig, and look at that. Now he's a skinny one, but I'll tell you what, we'll take those guys. We'll take those guys a lot. He fell off in the net, too. See you, buddy. I love largemouth. To say that I enjoy fishing with Keith Beasley is an understatement. He's got a great sense of humor, he understands the movements and ways of all wildlife, and he absolutely loves fishing. A great partner to spend a couple of days on the water with. Until next time, my friend. Got a double header on Chuck. Look, oh my God. That is the bait <laughs> of the year right there for, the, for a large mom. Wow. Double header on chub minnows. But Pete, we own this. Lady. Nobody's ever done that on TV we before. We set record. <laughs> Today's Garmin hotspot is at the top or north end of Potash Lake near Bancroft, Ontario. The waypoint on your screen will put you in the area. It's a small weed patch or clump that at first sight seems a bit too shallow to hold a decent fish. However, Keith and I cast in this clump at least four times before a great largemouth snuck out and committed to the bait. Persistence pays off. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com.
The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin Panoptics, all seeing sonar. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Close captioning for this episode was brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.